Hello everyone and welcome to Grandstand Sports Data, your go-to channel for sports, statistics, and unbiased handicapping. In today's video, we're going to bring you our models NBA February Power Ratings, giving you the top 10 teams for the month of February. We're going to take the statistics all the way from the beginning of the season, so game one, all the way to January 31st, and give you our top 10 teams based on our statistical model. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And then number 10 is the New Orleans Pelicans. New Orleans Pelicans, as you can see in the last illustration, so back in January, they were finished ninth. They finished ninth in terms of our power rating and SRS. And SRS is basketballreference.com. They had them ninth as well. This month, they have them ninth, and we have them at 10. Uh, as you can see from their offensive ratings, their offensive ratings have jumped up a little bit. They have done better in terms of offensive rebound and percentage, but that's about it. In terms of defense, though, Defense, they're not creating as many turnovers as they were last month, dropping down five spots there. But as you can see, a lot of orange, a lot of yellow here. They're a very, I guess you would say they're an above average club when you see that. Turnover percentage differential all the way down at the bottom. They're minus six, so they dropped down six spots since the last time. That's not necessarily a good thing. That means that they're not creating a lot of takeaways like we've already spoke on. But also, they're turning the ball a little bit more. They're turning the ball over a little bit more. In terms of percentages. Now, you can see they were eight and seven in January, so they didn't play bad. They played about middle of the road, but that's basically what their statistics are telling you that they're middle of the road, if not a little bit better. Uh, Zion is emerging with his big plays, and the young guys are starting to shoot better from the outside, which is making this an optimistic club going forward. And then number nine is the Denver Nuggets, and they've dropped actually three spots in terms of our model from since January but then two spots in terms of basketballreference.com because basketballreference.com has them still at number seven. Uh, our model is not necessarily liking them for a few reasons. Some of that would be their defensive rating. Their defensive rating went from seventh in the NBA down to 12th. They's also dropped in terms of efficient field goal percentage. So teams are starting to shoot a little bit better on them. But where have they dropped off? They've started turning the ball over a little bit more, dropping four spots in, in terms of turnover percentage. But they have picked it up in terms of their offensive rebounding. Uh, as you can see from the differentials, turnover percentage differential going from 12th in the NBA, tied to 12th in the NBA in January, to now 20th in the NBA in February. Not necessarily a good thing. As you can see from the top right, Jokic being one of the best players in the NBA, has he's got 10 win shares already through the season. This giving him, you know, the sec I guess you would call it second place or second best player in terms of win shares. They were 10 and 5 in the month of January, and they're starting to play better basketball, even though the stats are not necessarily telling that story. Jokic has been playing out of his mind, and they have beat some good teams out of the East. They have beat Boston, Milwaukee, and Philly all in the month of January. So it's something to look out for going forward. Eight is the Milwaukee Bucks, and they haven't necessarily been that uh, hot. I know people are going to go crazy about the Doc Rivers being 0 and 2. Remember, these numbers are from game one all the way to January 31st. So calm down with the Doc Rivers. He had the two games in February. These do not apply here. Please, if you do anything when you watch these videos, just listen. Listen and skill is free. Doc Rivers, two games in February, do not apply to these. So they were fifth in the NBA in terms of the last illustration in January in terms of our model, dropped down to eighth. They've actually dropped down in the SRS to 10th from being sixth in January last time. So basketballreference.com has them dropping. We have them dropping. They have shown improvement, though, when it comes to the turnovers. They've cracked down on their turnover percentage, but they have dropped a, just a touch in terms of their offensive rebounding. Now, their defense has not been that great. The defense has dropped down a couple spots. Even after being tied 17th in the NBA, they're down to 19th. Their turnovers, they don't create any takeaways on defense. They're 30th in the NBA in that department. They need to be better there. One place where they have improved more than anything else, has been their defensive rebounding. They almost cracked the top 10 after being 23rd back in January. So they are getting better there at rebounding the, basket, rebounding the basketball. They've already fi fired their coach like we spoke on and brought in Doc, Doc. But Dame's play has dropped, and it's dropped them out of the top 25 when it comes to win shares. He was there last in, in January. He's not there anymore, and it's only Giannis. He has improved. I think he was about fifth or sixth in terms of when she is and has jumped up to third. So maybe the change in coach can get all these guys together. But I think that the problem here in Milwaukee is that there's one basketball. 
coming in at number seven. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers, and they have been playing better. They are 11 and two. Their record in January. They were 15th in the NBA in the last illustration, according to our model and BasketballReference.com. They've jumped up to eighth in terms of Basketball Reference, and they turned jumped up to seventh in terms of ours, in terms of our model. Where have they been playing better? They've been playing better everywhere. You can see from their offense has jumped up four spots in terms of their offensive rating. They've jumped up five spots in terms of their offensive rebounding. They've improved slightly on their turnover percentage, and they've jumped up three spots in terms of their efficient field goals, so they're shooting a lot better. But people are going to talk about the high-flying offense and Donovan Mitchell just being smoking hot. Look at what we are looking at, though, and what the model is looking at. Defense. Their defense has gone from 12th in the NBA to second in the NBA when it comes to defensive rating. It's gone from top 10, tied for ninth, an efficient field goal percentage and a turnover percentage to inside that top 10, top 5 when it comes to efficient field goal percentage and tied for 7th when it comes to takeaways. They're improving, and they're improving 11 spots, 11 ranks for their defensive rebounding. They're just playing better basketball all around. You can see from the differentials tab, inclu- uh, jumping up 11 spots with their net rating. That's absurd, and it's almost never been heard of in terms of since we've been covering the NBA with this model. So Cleveland Cavaliers, smoking hot. Coming in at number six, it's the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks, they are sixth in the NBA when it comes to our model. They were 13th in January. Uh, Basketball Reference had them at 11th in the NBA. Last illustration, where they jumped up to actually a top five team, according to BasketballReference.com. Places where they have improved. They have improved in terms of their shooting percentage, has improved four spots. They were tied for 21st in the NBA in January. They're now 18th. You can see, though, look at their defense. Their defense jumped up 15 spots in terms of defensive rating. So they're playing better defense. They're defending the perimeter a lot better, as you can see from efficient field goal percentage. Jumping up 13 spots. 23rd in the NBA last month, now 10th in the NBA. They're actually committing less fouls, as you can see from free throws over field goal attempts third in the NBA in that department. So their defense has actually, it's improved. And that's what's made them a better basketball club. Everybody will point out how a team does on offense. Everybody knows how to score in the NBA. It's who can play the better defense. Knicks have been 14-2 and in the month of January. They're 15-2 and since acquiring OG. So this is, he, and he's helping both on the perimeter, on offense and defense. And yeah, that's starting to show in this stat line right here with the model so jumping up nine spots also on net rating for the differential that also will improve your club making them tied for fourth in the nba and a team to watch out for going forward and then number five is the philadelphia 76s and then when i say coming in at number five they kind of dropped off you can see they were third in the nba in our last presentation second in the nba in terms of basketballreference.com now we have them fifth basketball reference has them sixth and they've dropped off in a number of categories. They dropped off an efficient field goal percentage. They've been shooting worse. They haven't been doing much offensive rebounding as they've dropped down five spots there. In terms of defense, they're not defensive rebounding as, as good as they were in the beginning of the year. As they dropped 10 spots in that. They're tied for 26 in the NBA when it comes to defensive rebounding. Also committing fouls. Their free throws per field goal attempt on defense has dropped five spots, making them 27th in the NBA. So... Now the, you're factoring in Joel Embiid being hurt and the timetable, his timetable's not set for his return. That doesn't look good for them. The one light that you would you could be able to shine on this team, and that's Tyrese Maxey. He has improved as a basketball player. Actually, I believe making the All-Star game with a 5.8 win she has and being tied for 12th in terms of everyone in the NBA. So the emergence of him has actually created optimism, I would say, from Philly. Thing is, though, they were 7 and 7 in January. Some of that fact is in because of the Embiid injury, but we got to watch them going forward. They might have to be a player at the trade deadline to take them more serious. What was the Minnesota Timberwolves? Minnesota Timberwolves, they're the same as last month, fourth last month, fourth this month. Not much improvement, as you can see from the stats. I will touch on what they were in terms of January. They were 10 and 7 in January. Uh, they want to be big. Buyers in the trade market from everything that I'm looking at. Uh, Rudy Gobert is actually pretty upset that he got his uh, all-star snub. And Carl Anthony Towns has been playing well. The only thing is, is that, I'm sorry, Minnesota fans, it doesn't translate to the playoffs. It just doesn't for them. Uh, Gobert plays terrible in the playoffs. 
Kyle Anthony Towns not necessarily the biggest playoff performer as well. I think they're really leaning on Anthony Edwards when it comes to the playoffs. Him not making this win she is, but you know, in terms of talent level, he's that guy. Uh, and it's it's going to it's going to rely on him at the end of the day, and that's what I believe because I believe that these other two guys, Gobert and Anthony Towns, they've proven to us the time in and time out they can't get it done come playoff time. Coming in at number three, Los Angeles Clippers. And this is a lot like um, how I describe Minnesota. I think that having James Harden top 15 when it comes to win shares, yes, that's great and everything. He does this every single year. But then come playoff time, he gives you, what, eight points? Eight points in a game seven, I believe, last year. Eight points from a guy who's top 15th in win shares this season. So you can't really count on them. Um you can co- count on Kawhi. You've seen it a number of times. The only thing is when I say count on, you got to use it loosely because of the injuries. The injuries always pop up. PG, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, not necessarily the injuries, maybe just the honey buns, but it happens. And it, in come playoff time, it's going to happen. They did finish January 12-3. and three. They beat good teams like Phoenix, Oklahoma City, and then they also beat Boston in January. Uh, they actually smoked Boston in January. But remember... The playoff success doesn't necessarily translate. It's only translated for one player on this team, and it's Kawhi. Coming in at number two is the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is a team, they did pretty decent last year in the playoffs. Kind of, you know, showed us that maybe they can have some success here. They necessarily haven't changed. You could see from last illustration in January, second in the NBA for us, third in the NBA when it comes to basketball reference, and then they're second in terms of both of us now. Um, statistically haven't necessarily changed. Maybe the free throws per field goal attempt you could see do a little bit better. Drop down five spots on offense. Uh, so they're not getting to the line as frequently. But they finished 11-6 and six in January, dealing with a little bit of injuries. As you can see, SGA has been the best player in the NBA in terms of win share, 10.1, a point one better than Jokic. That makes him first best in the NBA. Uh, that success needs to translate into the playoffs. Not saying that it hasn't, but it has to. For them to be successful. Now coming in the number one, and I think that you could say the best lineup in basketball right now. This is a team that probably should win the NBA title, and that's the Boston Celtics. They were number one last last month in January, the number one this month in February. As you can see, they dropped off a little bit in terms of the offensive rebounding. Could be because of the inconsistency when it comes to Kristaps Porzingis and him not being available all the time. But they have done better at not turning the basketball over, as you can see, jumping up five spots in that department. The best player in terms of win shares has been Jason Tatum. Last month, they've had a few guys up there, uh, including Derek White, but he has not made it to the top 25 in this. So their play has kind of dropped off where Tatum has stepped up his game. Uh, Defense-wise, defense they've dropped when it's come to defensive rebounding. They're also not creating a lot of takeaways, and that's something that you can look out for uh, come play, uh, you know, come playoff time. Them not creating a lot of fouls, though, is huge come playoff time. Remember, getting to the line and not getting your opponent to the line is huge success come playoff time. Come playoff time. I keep repeating that. Maybe not necessarily now, but when the playoffs come, you don't want the opposition at the at the free throw line. The one thing I will look at um, Boston with in terms of fundamental handicapping is their late game offense. They're 11 and 5 in January, but their late game offense has wrinkles. Tatum does not take the ball up the court as the best player in the Boston Celtics. This only happens with, I believe, the Boston Celtics. There's other teams, you see them, 16 teams in the playoffs. You'll see the best player always either take the ball up the court or a play is run for him. Tatum, not necessarily the the guy here. You've seen in past playoff performances, Marcus Smart, um, Horford, these type of guys taking the last shot in the game to win the game. It's craziness to me. It's either got to be Brown and Tatum. They have to take the the bull by the horns or even the bull by the balls. They need to grow a pair of balls is my opinion on the Boston Celtics. You need someone with balls to get this win and to win the, the NBA Finals. You just you need someone to grow a pair. Now, we took all those stats and we're going to translate it into playoff success. This is what we have. So this is if the playoffs ended right now. We don't do in play on play in implications. We just, you know, top eight teams and just roll with it like uh, like so. You'll see the Boston Celtics would defeat the Orlando Magic four games to two. 
The Cavaliers would defeat the Philadelphia 76ers four games to three. The Knicks would defeat the Pacers four games to three. And then the Bucks would defeat the Miami Heat four games to two. That's given us a second round matchup of the Boston Celtics defeating the Cleveland Cavaliers four games to two. The Knicks losing a seven game series to the Milwaukee Bucks. Giving us an Eastern Conference final of I think what is mostly anticipated will be a seven game series and the Boston Celtics would squeak past the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, on the other side, the Timberwolves would defeat the Dallas Mavericks four games to one. Nuggets would defeat the Kings four games to three. Clippers would defeat the Suns four games to three. And Oklahoma City Thunder would defeat the Pelicans four games to three. That's giving us a second round of the Timberwolves defeating the Nuggets four games to two. That I don't see happening in terms of fundamental analysis, but we'll play the game with the model. The Clippers would lose to the Oklahoma City Thunder four games to three. And then the Timberwolves would defeat the Thunder in the Western Conference final four games to three. And then lose to the Boston Celtics in the NBA finals. So, you're going to say that the model has a lot of chalk here. And I think basically what it's trying to say is that that's what happens in the NBA. Usually the one seed, the two seed, they make it. Last year was an anomaly with the Miami Heat. But I do think that in terms of you can throw away the regular season stats when it comes to the playoffs. It comes to who has the bigger dogs. LeBron James wins NBA Finals. Kevin Durant wins NBA Finals. You know... Larry Bird, all these big names, Michael Jordan, it's always the big name players. There's only five guys that you can roll out, and usually your best guy is the engine that makes it to to the promised land. And that's how you handicap basketball. We can throw all the numbers that you want at you. It's usually who's got the better, who's got the bigger dog, or who has the, the bigger dog within themselves. So you've seen Jimmy Butler last year, just a bigger dog. Bigger dog than Tatum and Brown. Ended up defeating them. Bigger dog than than Giannis or even Giannis got hurt in the middle of that series but the fact there is is that it comes down to who wants it more and I know it's it's a poor excuse it's a poor way to look at the sport but if it's going to be translatable to any sport it's basketball like always would like to thank you guys for watching if you wouldn't mind please subscribe we don't just cover basketball we cover other sports like NFL NHL and other sports of the like. If you wouldn't mind, please hitting the like button. What this will do is it'll take our content and throw it through that YouTube algorithm and get more eyeballs onto our content, which would be greatly appreciated. And then finally, please share and comment down below. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.